Uh, hello everybody. So, um, well, I, I'm making this video partly because I'm mad, partly because it's, uh, there's, there's a subject here which I think is, is good to know for people traveling to, say, Central America, particularly Guatemala, um, and that's to do with ATMs. But also not just ATMs, but generally, uh, how do I put this, the, just the general incompetence of the country as a whole. And this is something that you'll run into. It, it'll be extremely obvious once you're here for a little while. Um, but basically what happened to me today. So uh, I went to withdraw some money from my bank account. And um, I use, uh, for that I use the ATM, my ATM card, my debit card. And it's just kind of the most convenient way. It's not necessarily the, the cheapest or the best way. But uh, anyway, I went to an ATM that I usually go to, which is right next to a bank, actually inside a bank. I don't go to the ATMs that are like, say, uh, in a shopping mall, because it's not really very secure. It's very easy to get skimmed in one of those, uh, those kind, of, kind of ATMs that are just kind of open to the public at all times. So the ATMs that I go to are usually, and this is something I do recommend if you go to ATMs, they're, they're like inside a bank, or, you know, they, they basically close when the bank closes. Those, those are really the only ATMs I kind of recommend, just based on experience. And my, not just my experience, but other people's experience. So, that's the kind of bank, I, uh, the type of ATM I was going to. <clears throat> and I've been to this ATM, I've been to this, the, the bank, uh, the ATM in this bank many times, but they recently changed their ATM. And the first time I did it, I, I went and withdrew money from this ATM, it was kind of slow. So I was noticing this problem already. This time I went to the ATM, and I tried to withdraw my money, and it started the process of giving me my money, and it just hung. Just literally didn't give me my money, and I was sitting there waiting for about, ah, I'd say over a minute, maybe I started waiting for about two minutes before I started to get a little bit freaked out and uh, actually I like there's two armed guards with shotguns in in the <clears throat> right right in front of this bank and so I called I, I called one of them over and I told them what happened I was thinking that maybe he would probably you know know in general what to do or who to contact and um, <laughs> okay this is kind of where it starts so um and I don't know why I took his advice, but this is kind of where this starts. And I, I need to, it's something that I keep relearning, never take advice from anybody here and assume that they know what they're talking about, because they probably don't. Um, but anyway, he, he told me to cancel the operation. Now, maybe I should, I, I, I kind of think now that I probably should have just waited. Uh, but anyway, I canceled the operation. Operation canceled, didn't give me any receipt, still didn't give me any money. Um, and so I was a little freaked out, and I'm like, okay, I need to go in the bank and maybe talk to, like, somebody who hopefully knows what to do in this kind of situation. So I ended up at the bank, and I found a teller, and I told him what had happened, and he came with me outside to the, the where the ATM was, or, um, and, uh, I, he, he took a look at it. And I think, I think he, at that point, he told me that I should go and check my account to see if the actual operation had, you know, gone through. And so I went home, and uh, he also alluded to me that maybe, like, I could take the transaction number, and he could, uh, you know, look at it in the ATM. Maybe I misunderstood him. The way he said it, it wasn't too clear, but I was kind of under the impression that he maybe knew what he was doing. Again, big mistake, big mistake. Never assume employees in Central America, Guatemala, know what they're doing because they probably don't. In fact, I think in just about every case I have come into contact with, they don't. And this is another case. So, all right. So I went back home, checked online, and. Uh, the pr process said uh, it was, or the transaction said it was processing. So, um, yeah, I actually went back to the bank and uh, went back and talked to the same teller, and I told him what happened. Or I told him, I told him that it was, it was in the process of, it was in, the transaction was processing, and 
so and this is where it gets this is this is where it gets really stupid uh so he told me to go outside with him take my debit card put it back in the machine and you know hit uh hit a few buttons to see my account balance from that machine um now, keep in mind, I mean, I had tried to take out about over $250, so I was really kind of, uh, I was unnerved that I, I, you know, I didn't know if I'd been scammed or what was going on. I was trying to get, you know, I was trying to get someone that maybe knew what they were doing. This guy kind of offered himself up as he, like he knew what he was doing. I assumed that he wasn't just experimenting at my expense, which has turned out what happened. Um, so he's like, yeah, he, the first time we tried to get my account balance, I, I think either I had, I pushed some wrong button or he had directed me wrong and I didn't actually get to see it. So we did it again. I, I saw the balance and it turned out, according to that machine, that my balance was actually um, a balance after that transaction had been debited so uh and that's all he did he's just oh okay yeah it went through uh, according to our machine it's like okay thanks you can, can you do anything no you got to call your bank great um so i did call my bank and uh you know i've got the i've now got the um, transaction in dispute fine but i also noticed on my account two other charges both of these charges were five dollars and both of them were the times that he had told me to put my card in and see my balance just for viewing my balance those two times i i got uh you know debited five dollars for each time under his direction he had never mentioned anything about that he had never said to me that he didn't really know what he was doing he was just kind of experimenting around to see you know just you know, at my expense, basically. Um, so, when I figured that out this morning, um, I went and uh, I got a printout of my, you know, the uh, transactions on my account, or those transactions, and went to the bank, went inside there, and basically told him, hey, you know, this is, this is your fault. Uh, you know, I was under your direction there. You never told me that uh, you didn't know what you were doing, and this is what happened. And um, as is typical, and is probably what you can expect from just about any bank. By the way, this bank is called Interbanco, and just in case you're you're curious. Um, but I, I've actually heard these kind of tales from other banks. Usually, typically, like if the ATM screws up, even though they, you know, they don't, they're renting space for that ATM. It's technically partly their responsibility. Uh, they still don't accept any responsibility for whatever happens with the ATM. That's just kind of like how they are. But, you know, I felt that still, I felt that this guy, you know, he had told me to do this twice, and I had thought that he was going, you know, this was going to lead to fixing the problem. Um, and so I felt that he was personally responsible. Maybe not, you know, maybe that wasn't their policy, but he, you know, personally, hey, man, you, you know, you told me to do this twice, and it charged me, it cost me 10 bucks. Um, so I thought, I thought I'd get some kind of acknowledgement or reimbursement from him. Nope, nope, not, hey, not my problem kind of a thing. You know, that was basically his reaction. You know, uh, you know, I don't own the ATM. I don't know that you're going to be charged. And I said, well, why did, if you didn't know, why did you take, you know, the initiative and tell me what to do in this case? But that is something that you'll find here so often people will basically when you have a problem you go up to them and you or, or when you question or something and you go up to them and they will be like there there's there's their chance to experiment with your situation they don't know what they're doing but they're perfectly happy to pl pretend they do um you know it's just it's it's ubiquitous everything from just asking directions down here people will tell you oh yeah sure it's over there they don't they have no idea but they'll tell you like they do and uh, i don't know they're like there's nothing quite there's nothing quite like the combination of complete incompetence and uh, just you know irresponsible attitude you know um, it gets me every time and every time I fall for it well 
not every time, but this time, I should have like when he when he asked me to insert my card and check my balance, I should have asked him why. But that's very hard to do when you're in that kind of a situation. You know, it's like you want to believe that you know somebody's there. You know that can you know direct you how to fix this problem, and so you don't like. You don't start interrogating them and say, okay, why do you want me to do this? You know, am I going to be charged for this? You know, uh, you don't want to be confrontational when you're trying to get back, you know, a bunch of money that you, I don't know, may or may not see again. Um, so it's, it's very hard. And yeah, I think I might be done using ATMs here in general. Uh, ATMs are the most convenient way to take out money, I think, uh, I think hands down. There are other, other ways. There's, you know, you can money gram money to yourself or, you know, you can, uh, you know, you do traveler's checks or actually if you go in the bank and actually withdraw, I think, from your account, you have to fill out a bunch of paperwork, but that's probably, like, it gets you the best rate, probably. Um, but, yeah, just in general... When, when somebody here tells you that they know what they're talking about or doing, um, particularly if it's an employee of even a bank, they probably don't. But they're happy to give you their bad advice. And when that bad advice, it causes some disaster, don't expect them to take any responsibility for it. That's why it's the third world. That's why Guatemala is probably going to be the third world for a long time unfortunately but um yeah just so be aware of that if you're traveling down here uh that's all i got to say <laughs>